Well, welcome to the day fifth of re rebirth of a new you. Uh, it's our free online uh, global retreat. Uh, and I'm happy that we're all here together once again. Um, dear uh, Hilda brought a very good question. She mentioned something. Do you want to share it with you? Oh, before I start, those who are viewing on Facebook uh, need to share with you that I only have one computer screen in front of me and, and, and uh, we're operating through a platform called the Zoom. And um, if you want to be in direct uh, connection with me, so what I recommend is to go on our website, uh, zaratustra.tv and sign up through the Zoom. And then uh, we'll be able to see each other. You can ask your questions uh, and we'll go on from there. Uh, those of you who are viewing this on Facebook, I'm not able to go back and forth and answer your questions, but I appreciate your presence and uh, feel free to join us on this platform. And uh, Mr. Amir, when, if you get a chance, if you check out our emails again to see if there's any last moment person who's trying to get on Zoom. Sure. We'll go from there, thank you. Okay, so, uh, Ms. Hilda, can you unmute yourself? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, so, share, share with us once again, you mentioned that you feel uh, kind of indifferent. You don't care about what people think or what's going on. You feel very relaxed in your new state of being. Am I right? Yes, yes that's true. And you know, I realized that I've always been a control freak. You know, I shall manipulate everything and just need to have control. But to the latest days, I understood that I don't care. You know, I care about my family, friends, you guys, whatever, but I really don't care anymore because I've been using so much energy uh, to try to control everything. And, you know, I'm just not in control at all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so good to just let go and to just trust, you know, to just have faith. And you have told me for so many years that all in as well, just relax. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you know, the monkey mind have been talking to me. Oh, you need to have control, you need to have control. But I have always been taken care of no matter what. So yeah, it's good to just relax into the silence and just fly and dive yeah. into the unknown. Yes. And phases of life, some things um, come to an end. It's like life, and this is what we're doing, a part of uh, rebirthing is that there's a new season. And life has its own seasons and it could be different periods. You could be a five year, seven year, nine year um, season to it. That there's a period that maybe you, you are Surrounded by certain people, you have your friends, um, you're doing a certain kind of work, and then that season comes to an end, and then something else happening. A lot of the friends disappear, relationships break up, people get married, uh, they move to other countries, and things move into a different direction. And all of a sudden, you may just discover yourself that you're alone a lot. And... Uh, or you're doing something, you're having a business or some sort of trade that you're in and that comes to an end. That has happened to me a number of different times that uh, the trade I was in, it came to an end. Even in my spiritual career for past, uh, as a teacher for past 12 years, uh, that has happened that I've seen like everything started as a healer and then past few years uh, I sort of started to lose my passion for, for, for doing healing work. It still happens, 
but it shifted from the primary uh, action of being a healer into moving into a spiritual teacher. And uh, it's interesting to see how things evolve and change. And you have no idea that even this is changing to something else continuously. And we have a tendency of hanging on not it's a part of the mind human mind is to hang on to whatever it used to be whatever the story is we want to hang on to it and we have a hard time to let go of it and realizing that it's shifting and changing to something else and you can see it is happening worldwide right now that reality that we used to have it's finished it's over i know there's a lot of people saying oh wow you know we're going to get vaccinated and we're going to go back to the old ways but we don't know there's no guarantee that we ever go back to what it used to be two years ago. What if, what if that never happens? What if it goes to a complete different thing? I don't know what thing. Either it's much more isolated or it goes into this new realm that you're separated a lot, you're isolated a lot. Or maybe it just comes into a very communal type of lifestyle. Are we going to be able to travel freely again? Or is there always going to be a story about it? It may be like that. We don't know. I have no idea. But what is clear and it's very apparent that it's changing it has changed into something else because already existence life on this planet for human beings at this moment is going through a major rebirth shifted and shifting which direction is it going to go i have no idea can you control it to go the way you want it to go because obviously we all want the same thing <clears throat> We all sort of want it to, we all sort of want to control it to go back in the old ways, the way it used to be. Isn't it? Because it was a lot more fun in so many ways. This one is not so much fun. But would it ever go back? What if it doesn't? What do you want to do? Do you want to change with it or you want to just be stuck into your old ways and ideas? Are you willing to change? Are you willing to reinvent yourself, recreate? Go with the change. Shift into the new paradigm, whatever that is. Be adaptable to it. Adapting to something else. Or 
or keep fighting for the old way. That's for each and every one to look within yourself and kind of check in with yourself and see where you're at. Where you're at with everything. Maybe it's time to new, learn a new trade. Maybe it's time for new ideas, ways of making a living, um, whatever needs to be done. Maybe it's time to move to a different country. Maybe it's time to start a new life somewhere else. So they say that the species that has endured throughout stages of, of our evolution, the one that's kept going and it keeps going is not the one who's the strongest. The species that has survived thousands of years throughout this evolution on this planet it's not the one, the species that's been the strongest. And it certainly has not been the species who's been the smartest either. And we have seen a lot of things happen, you know, like the ages of the dinosaurs and thousands of different species have lived on this planet and they're all perished. None of them, which was the strongest or the smartest, survived. Do you know which one survived throughout thousands, hundreds of thousands of years on this planet? What species has been able to survive? It wasn't the smartest and it wasn't the strongest. It's been the one with the most adaptability. The one that can really adapt itself to the new situation, to the new paradigm, to the new climate, to the shift, to the new way. So, what does that tell us? And we are in this shift, which is happening right now, means you have to die to your old ways. You have to let go of whatever and have the willingness to adapt and change with whatever is happening, whatever is coming. We all have this resistance within ourselves. Want to hang out to what it used to be. Talking about the old, talking about the old days. It used to be like this, it used to be like that. Oh, I was living on the streets of, I don't know, Oslo, for example, where there was no cars and there was no pollution, or I was living in London or New York City or wherever that it was so easy and it was so inexpensive and blah, 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 blah. everything has changed now. And you, you come across people that constantly talking about the past, how it used to be, how bitter it was, how it should be, yada, 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 you know, it goes on. But it's not that anymore. It's something else. It's the um, 
age of technology, it's digital. Everything is digital. Everything's changed, okay? And you're gonna have to change with it, roll with it, learn the new language. There's a new language now. For example, if you don't know how to use a computer and, or a smartphone, you're illiterate, basically. You're basically like it's equivalent to not be able to read and write. It's just like that. So you have to learn how to use a computer, how to use a smartphone. As for some of us, maybe very difficult for the new generation, you know, they grow up with it and it's super simple for them. So it's a new language. You have to learn the language. Otherwise you won't be able to communicate because everything is being processed through this new language. So it changed and all of us who are sitting here right now being together have learned how to speak the new language. We've learned how to use our smartphones and our computers. So you're already changing to something else. And it's gonna change, and it's gonna change, and it's gonna change. You're just gonna have to roll with it and let go of whatever it, it was. Yeah, of course, the memory is there. The experience of whatever you have experienced is there, I get it, of course. It's very vital. That's very precious of what we have experienced and we have memory of it. And we carry that with us. So hopefully we don't have to uh, go through the same mistakes or same experiences that we have had in the past. We learn our lessons, you know, sometimes we have to go through the same thing dozens of times before we learn. But so we carry that. And with the new, whatever is coming, it will add up to it. But you can't just hang on to that and resist what's coming. It will crush you because it's so big. It's much bigger than you and I. It's huge. And you know, some people may come and say, okay, this is controlled or it's a conspiracy, the whole thing. And it's being implemented on us. There's validity to it. However, there is something much bigger than any of that some force bigger than any kind of government, any kind of groups, something above them, above any human beings with whatever power the human being may have. There is something above that. There's a force, universal force. Yet this universal force in the apparent world it's in a constant battle of the, of the negative and the positive forces, the dark and the light are into a power struggle in the apparent, what appears to be apparently. But then when you go one step beyond that, there is something above even that, that which supports it all, that which is the background of everything. The sub substratum, something beyond.
the power, the force, the big kahuna, the breath, the Ahura Mazda, the Yahweh, Krishna. Some call it Allah. You can feel it when you say the word. You can really feel the power to it. Yahoo. Not Yahoo. I'm not talking about the search engine. They took that word from the uh, Islamic mysticism, Yahoo. It's a very powerful word. Yahoo is referring to that. Yahweh. Something's behind everything else. It's the very fabric of life. And then everything else, it appears. It begins to appear and disappear. So, in this appearance, at this stage, things have speeded up, things changing. There's, there is a constant change happening, one thing to another, to another, to another, to another, continuously. And it changes its face, it changes its looks. Da, 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 da. I don't know if you've ever been on a LSD trip or mushrooms or Temescal or ayahuasca or any kind of psychedelic kind of a journey. And then in the midst of your, your journey, if you look in the mirror in your own face, your face starts to change. You may just see hundreds of different characters in front of you in a mirror. It changes. Very quickly. But in the midst of all this change, your breath is consistent. You're breathing. You're breathing continuously. You don't stop breathing. Do you ever? Do you ever stop breathing? No matter what changes are coming. Your body is changing. You can see how it changes. Your emotions, your experiences, your thoughts, your way of thinking, your finances, your relationships, everything changing constantly. But your breath is the same. You ever stop breathing for half an hour or a day? You ever stop breathing when you're sleeping? You take a break from breathing? Have you noticed that? You may run out of breath because you walked up the stairs very quickly, or you ran, or you did something, or you got in a, you got nervous, you get in an argument or you're swimming or whatever, but it never stops. It's always happening. But the day it stops, 
then you're announced that you no longer physically are here. As you're breathing, your body starts to regenerate itself continuously. It's a constant regeneration. It's a constant change. There's momentum in the breath and there's momentum in the body regenerating itself that you can use that momentum if you tune into it and if you're willing to let go of your idea, your mental image of who you think you are, what you look like, the way you dress, the way you behave, the way you're set in the society, then a self-reinventing can happen you literally can change to someone else. Your looks can change, your body can change. Your energy level can completely change, shift. You can have a lot of energy all of a sudden. You can see that, feel it. And everything surrounding you can change too. But there are elements, fundamental elements of the mysticism that must be understood. There are elements that these elements are not visible to the naked eye. They're not visible into the conventional mind. However, the conventional mind is working. Even a conventional spiritual mind cannot understand because they're residing and they're abiding by different rules and regulation. Throughout the history of our existence, there's been many sages that they have come to the understanding of the mysticism and the power of the breath, breathing. And the power of the mind. Because you do have a mind It's there, of course, but we don't know how to use it. It's running loose on its own all the time. It's like a wild beast driving you crazy, up and down. How are you doing, Scott? Scott from UK? Are you there? You can unmute yourself if you feel like saying hello. So, any questions so far of what we talked about? You're a quiet bunch. No, no questions. Can you unmute yourself? 
Yes, I am. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking today because the energies, I'm so tired and I feel like I'm, um, you know, in water and not very focused. And I feel like it must be the, the, the energies who makes this. Is it right? Yeah. The energies of what we're doing here or? No. Um, the change of the energies. Yeah. Well, mm. we're all a part of one thing. Mm. Yeah. You know? yeah. So everything affects everything constantly. Mm. Yeah. yeah. The more you dive into this work, the more you dive in into yourself, the more you realize that how everything is connected to everything. Yeah. And there is a natural flow. Everything is connected to everything. It's mm. all connected. And everything has a flow to it. It's flowing. Yeah. Yeah. So when you recognize that flow mm. and you're breathing and you're synchronizing your breath, you're getting synchronized with yourself. You understand mm. the flow, the planet Earth, everything is breathing. It's all one organic unity. Just not even this planet, it just goes beyond. But, you know, forget about the rest of it. Let's just hang on to what we are dealing with here. And in this flow, it's one entity that is breathing all the time. It's one entity that is shedding its skin. It's one entity that Different people, they're born, they die. It's like different cells of your body, cells dying, and then the body rejuvenates. Your skin, you know, sometimes peeling. You can see you get dry and particles of your skin is coming out. Your hair falls, new hair comes out. You see, you can see this. Is constantly, it's regenerating itself. So, naturally, since you're a part of the whole thing, as you're shifting, as you're coming out of this mini me, I'm, you know, and you're starting to kind of like expanding into the whole thing. Starting, your, your perspective starts to change in this expansion. But whether you like it or you don't like it, and you get your ass kicked by life, hard sometimes, over and over, you get your butt kicked. To what? To wake up. To wake up to what? To wake up to the natural law of existence. The breath of a human being and the breath of the planet and the breath, the wind is another breath. When it's windy and the wind's coming and going, this is the same breath that is happening. And you start to wake up to these different things that also there's shift in energy levels. You know, it can go up, it can come down, it can move. And you don't take things so personally because you're starting to go beyond these boundaries of a person into dissolving into the one, oneness.
It's frightening to let go. Try one thing, try to let go of your money. See how scared you become if you have to let go of your money. That's very first place. You can work on yourself to see where you're at. Go to your money and you will see how much you have evolved spiritually. Because you may say all these good words, oh, you know, I'm ready to die, I'm ready to go, I'm ready, ready. I'm evolved, I'll let, I'm ready to let go of my relationships, family, lovers, kids. Well, let's try something very simple to see how stuck you are into this unit of the control of the one unit controlling things and is dominating its own rhythm and then it's always getting smashed from this way and that way and being thrown on this side and that side so then go into see can you let go of one of your relationships. Can you um, disconnect? Can you go live in isolation, which is happening right now? Not seeing your kids, not seeing your family, not talking, not having your cats there. Examine yourself in this process of rebirthing in a new you, Examine yourself. You can always examine yourself to see where you're at and how much you have evolved by taking something which is very dear to you away and isolate yourself from it and examine yourself how you're going to be reacting to that practically. And then you're going to see where you are. And that gives you an opportunity, a very valuable opportunity, if you can, to shift into more of a vastness because it forces you to go outside of the mind. It forces you to go outside of your ideas into your force because it's so terrifying and you get so congested over it that you have to either be crushed or you have to go into beyond the mind into a very silent place that there is no mind. So you can see the total connection that you have with cosmos. Then you see you're safe and you're okay. Because it forces you in a shift of an individual, shift the individual into the vast. And yeah, of course, a part of you wants that because into the vast, then the fear and worries and anxieties of the individual do not exist. They dissolve. But this shift is frightening. It's scary. But you see it in those who few on the planet who've gone through that shift. You see them and you want them. You envy it or you want it or you desire it that you could be free, 
you can be free, but you have to go through this process of the death of whatever that is. You're giving something away, whether it's money, it's position, whether it's body, whether it's family, it's relationship. Whatever that is that you find very dear to you, you're giving that away. And then you're practicing into the expanding your consciousness. And yeah, then if you succeed in that, you're going to get the real juice and you free yourself. But it is a process. It's a shift. It's a jump. Because it's scary to jump into the unknown. Because you want to know what's going to happen. You have to control it. But you're going to lose all of it anyway. All of it is going to be gone very soon. Soon, you have to come to terms with death. Very soon. All of us. You have to come to terms with it. You don't have a choice. You're going to have to let go of that which is the most dear to you, which is your body. You have to let it go. Sooner or later, it's going to be taken away from you. Your money, your positions, your stuff, all of it is going to be gone. They're going to be transferred to someone else. You won't be in control of it. So, knowing what's going to happen, let's wake up. Let's wake up out of this illusion we're in. And while you still have time, practice. Get in the habit of expanding yourself and letting go. It's being taken away from you right now as we're speaking. Everything that you thought that was of value in the material world is systematically being taken away from you, one at a time. Can't you see that? And if you see it, then why not consciously begin to practice the shift into the expansion rather than trying to hang on? Do you need a five minute break? I think you guys are kind of sleepy and tired today. Let's take a break. Okay, we'll take a, let's say it's 12.48 my time. So we take 10 minutes. Is that good for you? 10 minutes or five minutes? What do you, what do you prefer? Five minutes or 10 minutes? 10 minutes? Okay, 10 minutes. Let's do it. Take a break. Who's that? Blanca. Hi, Blanca. Where are you from? I've seen you before. Hi. Um, I'm, hi, hi, hi. hi. <laughs> I'm in 
I'm in Mexico at the moment. I'm in a city called San Miguel de Allende. I originally heard. from. Yeah, yeah, quite quite magical place. They say yeah. everything is built on rose quartz crystal here. Oh, wow. San, yeah. San Miguel Allende. De Allende, yes. It's about in, three hours north from Mexico City. Okay, I'm in Tulum. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> You know, you, you, That's nice. there's light behind you, so I don't see your face. Oh, wait. Right. Sorry. So, Let me turn it oh, okay. Hey. Yeah. Oh, I saw you, you. You were with us a few days ago. Now I remember. I w yes, I was with you a few days ago. True. Well, yes, 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 yes. Welcome and back. We, I, and I first saw you some years ago at the Life Expo in Los Angeles. Right. Did you yeah. live there in Los Angeles? Sorry? Did you live in Los Angeles? Um, no, I went back and forth quite some time for doing sound healings. I'm originally from Berlin. Okay, all right. Yes. And what do you do in uh, San Miguel Allende? Um, I am rebuilding my life okay. <laughs> again. <laughs> like, like a lot of other people. <laughs> yes, yeah, like a lot of other people and like, many times before. <laughs> it <Right>. never stops. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm trying not even to be focused on the one more time. It's like, I'm just doing it. <laughs> I get it. I understand. I don't yeah. know how many times I've done it in this lifetime. Yep. You know? It's like, right. Yeah. It's definitely been far away from any ordinary life. <laughs> Oh, I imagine. I very much imagine that I can understand to a specific amount. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're here with us. And I hope Yes. I hope there is something of value here for you. So Oh, of course, a lot. Even even by the days I, I was not with the group, I I could tell. Yeah. So I'm I'm super grateful. So let me ask you how do you pronounce your name? It's Blanca Cadi. Blanca. So let me yes. ask you this: What, what, if you would, if you can point your finger on it, what do you think so far? What's been, what have you learned from this? If you can point your finger on it. Yes, one of one yeah. of one of the main things for me personally is. Uh, is a calmness because over all of the things that you that you speak about are things that I don't often hear from other people yet it is very much my truth and my experience as well mm -hmm. so that part calms me a lot and that is of great 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 value for me personally on one hand as a human walking and making the experiences and on the other hand from a spiritual perspective just to hearing things it's just it's super soothing for for the mind that finds itself in a setting where people slightly think different even if it's in a spiritual setting right um i still find myself being like i, I still have i still see things slightly with a different twist so the things you say resonate a lot and that is for me very very relaxing and helpful because when I'm in that state it's easier for me to make the moves and the changes and trust and knowing that everything truly is the way I experience it beautiful that's the main thing well I'm very happy to hear that yeah <laughs> me too <laughs> thank you <laughs> you're welcome you're always welcome yeah <laughs> uh, nice meeting you officially. Yes, <laughs> likewise. Thank you. Thank you for asking as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's a nice view behind you. 
Yeah, very nice. Okay, send me there. I do want to explore, I do want to, ex I have been in Tulum the whole time, been here, and, uh, <laughs> and now I'm, hopefully in a, in a couple of weeks, I, I would like to explore it a little bit, just getting around, going to different, maybe I can go to one or two places before um, I go back to the US to visit my family. But uh, it feels like there's so much to explore. I find this country very magical. Oh, super magical. When, yeah. I, when I arrived here, I, uh, um, I, to be fully honest, I came here in islands. Oops, wait, the internet is low. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. And uh, that meant for me as a European that I first had to go somewhere else. Uh, that's the restriction for aligned. Um, are you like your picture is all the pictures are not moving. I'm not sure if you can. See. Yeah, I'm, I'm experiencing. Um, yes, good. That it slowed down a little bit on, on the. Uh, on the internet. Yes. But I can hear you. Yes. Yeah, so, so. Oh, okay, good. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, so by, by that I came, synchronicities opened the door for me to, to, to come to San Miguel. A beautiful place of a wonderful woman. Uh, we've been doing constructions, building terraces and, and sunshades and preparing her place for, yeah, kind of like a retreat place as well. And um, it is super magical. The culture here is so rich. I, I as well will be possibly coming further south wanting to explore more that area because I've only, only in quotes, because it's super, super sweet here, um, explore a few other spots. Like the house, I don't know how it is in Tulum, but here the houses have all different colors. It's, it's I can see the colors I are already enjoying it. Yeah, like it a lot. Yes, I I, um, I painted uh, the yellow part a few days ago, yes. and the shelves are made by her by her husband, and we got the pergola out there. Um, some sunshades and it's it's just beautiful like the purples of the flowers outside in the street the houses are pink and yellow and light blue and everything it's marvelous there, I think you there, would like it as, as well the community here well I'm glad you brought it up I'll just keep it in mind and keep it on my radar so maybe I come yes. and visit uh, I'm going to start again Yes. Yeah. Thank. Thank you very yes. much for sharing. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, please. Yeah. Wonderful. Likewise. Nice connection. Yes. Same. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah. All right. So. We're here. Anybody has any questions? Uh, anything you want to share? No. Okay. Cool. So since we're all back here, we're going to be doing a uh, breathing exercise. We haven't done any kind of breath work. I mean, the breath work, basically, this work was originated, I mean, in the modern world by Leonard Ohr in uh, around 1974. And, uh, but as I mentioned to you earlier on the first day, uh, rebirthing has been around ever since the ever since. It's not something uh, new belonging to pseudo spirituality. It's been, and it is in many ancient cultures, it has been, and it's been practiced. So we're following up continuing 
and ancient work. But the rebirthing and the work I do is not based on breathing exercises. So, however, I mentioned that there is breath work in it, but it's not merely on that. It's this idea of this retreat and workshop was to put light on our being born into the new modern person that we are today. And again, it depends on the level of our adaptability, how we can adjust, adapt, change, go through all these different scenarios which are happening. Like as our sister Blanca, she has moved from Berlin to Mexico and found herself in San Miguel Allende and started a new life and everything and changing everything. So a part of the mind could be stuck into, okay, I need to stay in the same place, do the same thing, has to be this way, has to be that way. And then we suffer. There's suffering because that's not what it is. Or you are flexible to adapt yourself to a new system, the new whatever is happening. I'm not saying that you have to move to another country. I'm not talking about that necessarily. And maybe that's not what's happening for you. It's not in the cards for you. But what I'm saying is your willingness to stretch, stretching yourself, to come out of your bubble, to come out of the way you're thinking, the ideas you have, whatever that is, whatever is your idea, is can you stretch out of it? But let's say your idea, let's say you think this way that a man and a woman, they get married and then they have to have kids. And then this whole scenario that's been being played on the planet Earth for hundreds of years, let's say that's the way you think. And that's the way it is. You have to be with one person. That's your soulmate. You're going to be together. You're going to be together all the way to the end of your life, which is not happening right now around the planet. But what I'm saying is, you have to stretch beyond your ideas. And by stretching, fear will come. But if you can go beyond that, then there is tremendous amount of power, liberation that will come to you, will reveal itself. Because life, is constant, life is, life has been around ever since the ever since, and it's not going to end. And you are a part of it. You are a part of life. So life supports system. Life is supporting all of us. All of us are being supported by life. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that one more time. I want you to pay attention to what I just said, okay? So let's pay attention to this. We're all supported by the same life, same breath, same force. It's the same electricity right now, wherever you are. Let's say you're, you're in Frankfurt, you're in Oslo, you're in Stockholm, you're wherever, in Los Angeles, wherever you are. The electricity that is powering your computer, powering your TV, powering your cell phone, your refrigerator, your toaster, your, your dishwasher, same electricity is powering 
the mayor of the city or the prime minister of your country or the president or the king or queen, it's the same electricity that goes everywhere. There is no difference between the electricity that you receive at your home than a very, an actor, actress, prominent person, prime minister receives the same electricity. It's the same one. So let's understand that. Let's realize that. It's the same life. It's the same breath that we're all breathing. And it gets recycled. You're breathing the same breath that Chinese Khan or Adolf Hitler or Jesus Christ or Moses breathed from thousands of years ago to hundreds of years ago to now. It's the same air. There's no brand new air. Nothing has been imported from another planet. It's the same air. It's recycling through the planet, uh, through vegetations, animals, soil. Everything gets recycled. It's the same air, same molecules of particles that are in the air and we're breathing it. So we are continuously have particles of everybody else in us, good, bad, ugly. All of it is continuously getting recycled. It's all one. It's one, one, only one, and then it appears as so many different ones in an appearance, but it's itself. So it's one life supporting itself and taking care of itself. And in that, you can relax into that. You can let go of the imaginary control into surrendering in the moment and allowing it to present the next moment and the next moment to you instead of trying to dominate or control it all the time to be the way you think it should be. It's easier not to try to make things to be your way, that's a lot of effort, then just allowing yourself to adjust to what is. It's so much easier because it becomes eventually very effortless as you learn that, because you become the flow, you become the breath. As you experience, as you can see, there is no effort into breathing. You don't have to put an effort to breathe. It's happening automatically. Same as life. Life is happening automatically. Can you see that? Can you recognize that? And can you relax into that? for a few moments. Can you just kind of relax into life is and not take it so personally that it's against you or what does it mean or da, 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 da. can you just chill out into being, being right now? and not go anywhere in your mind. What's gonna happen? Da, 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 da. Uh, well, what's gonna happen to me? How, how am I gonna make a living? How am I gonna make? Yeah, of course, fear, thoughts rise inside you naturally, but you have the power of observation. You can simply be aware and observe the passing thoughts and stay in this place, stay in your breath, and just watch 
thoughts come and go, emotions come and go, you're, you're noticing them, they're passing through you, you're observing them, and as you stay in your breath, you calm down, calmness come, and you relax. And then you will be reminded that you are life. You're part of life. You're supported by life. And if you forget and freak out, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up. Every time you remember, then you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Because we're in an era at the point that you have to surrender to life the way it is, rather than fighting it. And it becomes easier, it becomes more fluent. It flows. But to do that, you consciously take your time and be quiet. You consciously take your time and go beyond thoughts. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to stand up. And in this meditation, we're going to be doing is that. So, it's, it's very, very simple. We've done this before with some of you. It's uh, this is if you can take your shoes off and kind of feel the ground. Feel the floor, the ground, wherever you are. And um, see. And for a moment, just observe yourself and imagine that from your torso down, it's like you're a tree. And this tree is, goes deep its roots goes deep into the planet. So simply you close your eyes and you observe yourself that from your torso down, you are an old tree, it's rooted into the planet and it's very grounded. And if there's any storms or winds, only the upper part of the tree, the branches will shake but not the bottom part. So can you see that for a moment? Now, the next thing is that take a deep breath and as you're breathing, imagine that you're bringing the prana, the force, energy force of the planet the life force in the form of a green light is entering into your body. So as you're breathing in, and you can even use your knees, you know, like you just breathe and in and breathe out. And then breathe in and then breathe out. In a very easy way, you no, know, breathe in and breathe out. As if you are in a lagoon and you are swimming in the lagoon, you're under the water and you are just simply swimming or you're flying in the sky, you're traveling through dimensions, 
you are in a cosmic plane and you're very smoothly traveling without an effort. Breathe it in, breathe it out. Natural way of breathing in and breathing out. Really effortless, without a story, it's very simple. What do you have to do to breathe? And you're simply synchronizing your breath with the breath of life. As you're breathing in and out, without an effort, everything is synchronized. All worries and anxieties and fears begin to disappear. It's only one flow. It's only the oneness. It's only the self. It's only life. And life comes with love. You can recognize that in your own heart. Because you have the power of love. Always here. Within your heart. You're completing the wheel, so it's turning. And it's returning, and it's turning again. Beautiful. Now, as we're standing up, we're going to slowly move up and down with our bending our knees. And you're going to create a generator within yourself as if you turn on this generator and you're going to make this noise. It's like and just see that the prana of earth the energy, the green energy, the prana is coming through your roots from the planet and it's spiraling all the way through your body, connecting all your chakras to each other, very gently, in a very simple, gentle way, going all the way to your crown chakra and goes to the cosmos. Connecting the world below to the world above. Now 
take a deep breath. So you're standing and very gently you're here without really effort. Pay attention, see your breathing effortlessly. But in this breath, you kind of start to lose the sense of being separated from your environment. You become sort of like a particle hanging in the air, simply being here, simply being present. But it's not trying to go anywhere, it's here. And while you're here, just notice that how effortless everything is happening. Notice that how effortlessly day turns to night, night turns to day, and you don't do anything about it. Seasons changing, and you don't do anything about it. You don't control that. Everything is a spiral, everything is moving from one thing to another, yet there is one thing that does not move. Something is aware of the cycle But that one thing doesn't have a cycle itself. So while you're doing your work, you sink into the center of yourself, the observer, the witness, the one which does not change and it's always here, the one who is aware of change. And in sinking in that, all of a sudden, you begin to see that you are completely connected to everything. You can feel the air as you're moving your hands. You can touch things. The air could be felt with your hands. Feel like sitting, you're welcome to go back to your position before, just simply 
sink into this moment and see how effortless it is to be here. Recognize how effortless it is to be still. And actually thinking or worrying or calculating takes effort and it's exhausting. And as you're just in this state, see yourself being transparent, see yourself, see your body kind of dissolve into the air. It's like when the wind comes, it goes through your body without any resistance. You can easily implement this simple way into your daily life. Let the breath of life guide you. Seek simplicity of being. Avoid complexity. Simplicity comes with lack of resistance. The less you resist, the more simple it becomes. The more you try to make things be your way, the more difficult it gets. Surrender to what is and enjoy the fruits of life. Life will keep feeding you and take care of you. These are the principles of life beyond the mind. The mind cannot grasp the principles of being the flow. The mind wants logic and understand things beyond its grasp cannot do that. Hence, creates fear, worry, anxiety, and take you into a world of duality. The deeper you go within yourself, the more you're quiet, the more you're still, the more fluid everything becomes. Imagine that the laws of physics are reversed. You have a backpack. The more you put into your backpack, the more room it has. The more you stuff things in it, the more room 
it creates. Logical mind does not understand that. But life understands it. You're bending the laws of life that, or the world that you live in, that you have been conditioned to believe that's the way it is. Bend these ideas, go beyond them. Look into the worlds of possibilities. You can use the power of your imagination for a moment. This is not positive visualization. It's not a mental exercise. We're using the power of our imagination for the benefit of seeing possibilities of realities that simultaneously existing right now. Can I enter into this possibility that I surrender myself to the flow of life And in that surrender, life takes care of me, pays my bills, feeds me, takes care of my family. It's very different than the Western mentality that you have to go out there and make it happen. Can I let go of my old self, my old ways of thinking and make myself open to a new way beyond my imagination? Surrendering. Becoming like the wind, flowing, traveling over the ocean, traveling over the desert. The wind nobody can claim it, box it, manipulate it. Own it, draw lines, property lines on it. Just be the wind. You are the wind because that's what keeps you alive, your breath. It's traveling through you all the time. Why not recognize it? In that recognition, see how effortless it is to breathe. That's how life lives, conducts itself, 
effortlessly. Life never has put any effort into anything. See how easy it is to be here. What do you have to do to be here right now? How much effort does it take to be yourself? And how much effort does it take to be what society, your parents, your grandparents, your schooling, expects you to be. Your family, your partner, your kids.
Oh my God.
you see how effortless it is. Not even trying. You're simply here. You're exercising your natural birthright of just being, being here and now in this moment. And you know how effort how much effort it takes trying to constantly visualize, manifest, create in the future in your mind. I meet a lot of people in pseudo spirituality with the brand new spiritual teachings they're working on their past traumas. They're trying to manifest. They're trying to create. And they're miserable. There's so much effort constantly going into that. You are the creation. Of course you're always creating. Because you are the creation. That doesn't require putting any effort. You are manifestation. So that doesn't require us to keep trying to manifest things. It takes effort, energy. It's a mental activity. It gets your mind activated. But when you go beyond that in the simplicity of just being here, then the entire creation is at work through you, surrounding you. It's so simple, I don't know why we don't see it. Because we absolutely have nothing to do with day turning to night and night turning to day, with vegetations growing, with wind coming and going, with hurricanes coming, earthquakes coming and going. We have nothing to do with any of it. So what makes us think we are separated and we're not included in this process of life taking care of itself. What makes us think that we're left out? And we have to constantly struggle So, we are simply being born into the new you, new yourself, the one that recognizes you don't have to be an image of the society the way they want you to be. You can be yourself, you can be fluid. You don't have to worry, 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 think, think, think of future, of what's gonna happen to you. You simply learn 
to be quiet. And in that comes the recognition of being the flow of life, a part of that flow. And see how fluently things come. They come, they go, people come, people go. Yeah, there's the appearance of effort. At times you're putting an effort in making something happen. But there's difference in you are making it happen than recognizing you're a part of the life making it happen. There's a major difference in it. You recognize you're a part of life making something happen, then it becomes effortless than you thinking you're making it happen. And then comes suffering with it. Very good. If there's no questions, uh, anybody has any questions, comments before we wrap it up for today? I have a question, please. Because yes. yesterday, Where's, I'm who, here, Connie. Yeah. Hi, who is that? What is your name? I'm sorry, I don't know. Connie. Connie. Hi, Connie. Hi. 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 Yesterday, we talked about the caterpillar going to be a butterfly and okay. it, and it uh, uh, takes some struggle to be a butterfly. Okay. And today you are telling us that if we go with the flow, there is no struggling. Right. So how can I, how can I put these two things together? What you said yesterday about the caterpillar and today going with the flow. No struggle. Right. When the caterpillar is in its it's in its cocoon and and it's working, that's a natural phenomenon of its existence. It's it's not making it up or it's not trying to accomplish something outside of its nature. It's simply nature is operating through it. It's, it's not, when you're giving birth and you're in a process, it's the nature doing its thing. Yeah. You're not making an effort to have your belly grow and grow more and grow more. It's naturally happening. Yeah. I understand when you're giving birth, birth, yeah, there's like, you have to push, push. I've never been a part of it. But the whole process is a part of the nature. And, the, and so what I was talking about yesterday was in reference of that, that's a natural thing which is happening, a part of the nature. Yeah. Is it making any oh. sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, so if I understand you, then even if we go with the flow, then we can meet struggle, struggle, struggling. There is the appearance. There, there is an appearance that you are putting things together. Let's say you yeah. want to model your home your apartment, your house, and you're calling the painter, you're calling a carpenter, you're, you're putting work into it. You have, yeah. to move, you have to move your stuff out of the, the house, put them in another room, cover them up. You're doing things. Yeah. And you're building something. So, there's two things. One is you can struggle. There's an appearance that you're really struggling doing it. Or there could be this attitude of 
no thoughts. Oh my God, what the hell am I doing? I hate doing this. This sucks. Why do I have to do this? Why did I? If there is no thoughts, your body is doing whatever it needs to do. And you get through it in five days or a week or two weeks. But if you sit down and keep thinking about it, that how much you hate it and why you're doing it and why did you decide and everyone's cheating you and all the carpenters are bad and all the painters are bad. Now you're suffering and it seems like you're climbing a mountain. Yeah, I see. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... One, one is you're still, your body's doing what it needs to do. Yeah, you're sweating, you're tired, you're hungry, you're thirsty, but there's no thoughts about it. You're simply doing it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, well, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Um, a couple of short announcements. Uh, this endeavor is being done on a donation basis. So if you feel compelled, uh, make, a, make a generous donation. We appreciate it. Uh, we're a small, um, organization so we appreciate your help and support uh, i also uh, do offer this is the last season that i'm going to be offering the life training program it is a one-on-one -on -one coaching program uh, that's tailor-made specifically to your needs and goals so if you're interested you're welcome to contact me and we will set up a consultation appointment for you. And then we talk about how long it takes and what it takes to uh, go through this and how much it costs and everything. Um, for the moment, I have postponed our two events, the shamanic healing and uh, the reinventing yourself retreat, which was going to be next week. I have postponed them because there's going to be construction uh, at my house. So, um, so those two events are postponed for the time being. Be well, take care of yourself and um, try to take a little bit of time after we're done. Uh, don't get engaged with your phone, uh, with computer, TV, the news. Just take a little bit of time. Let, let whatever we talked about uh, sink in. Just take a few moments five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of silence. Just hang out by yourself and try even not do anything. Just, just let it sink in. Um, just feel it. Let's see, let it process and uh, the realizations to sink in. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Namaste.